Hi there, this is a do-it-yourself video on how to troubleshoot an electric over hot water baseboard heating system. I did quite a bit of research on the web and couldn't find any good resources. So hopefully this video helps some of you that are faced with the same things we were looking at. The problem that initially led to the investigation was just a no heat situation. Turn the thermostat on and no heat would come out of the registers. But uh, through the troubleshooting process we learned a bit about how these baseboard uh, hot water baseboard boilers work so I'll cover them from start to finish so just a real general overview there's the actual heater it had a couple of covers looks like that and um, first off there are a couple of breakers in the front this 15 amp breakers this 15 amp breakers for control of the relays and the transformer um, these these Twin 50 amp breakers are for the two lower wattage element. There are uh, there are four elements in this: two high watt and two low wattage elements. These are for the two lower. Uh, these twin 60 amp breakers are for the two high wattage elements, and I assume that they're laid out that way so that in the summertime or in the uh, sp spring and fall when it's not too cold, if you wanted to, you could turn off the two lower elements so that the uh, potentially you'd save some energy. I don't know the heater would run longer, but it would burn less energy while it's use less energy while it's heating so on the front here we also have a uh, pressure gauge and uh, someone who likely installed it identified 12 to 20 psi as the target range with a 30 psi max and then the target temperature of 160 to 180 and I'll take this cover off this is a monotron electric boiler it's old it's probably 40 years old and on the inside is the wiring harness and uh, this is invaluable when you're trying to figure out what's going on. So I spent a lot of time looking at this very tiny diagram. <coughs> and after looking at the diagram, we can trace out some wires here. And I'll just give you a very high level overview. This pair of wires comes from the thermostat. So it's just a very thin pair of copper wires. When the thermostat is off, those wires have an open circuit at the end. But when the thermostat is on, in other words, sending the signal to turn on the heater, the uh, those pair of wires are a short circuit. One of the wires runs up to the zone control and one of the wires runs down to the transformer. I think this is a 24 or 28 volt AC transformer and the while we're here looking at it the the original problem was found today with a broken wire right here. It's kind of fragile in this location uh, if vulnerable and something bumped it and, and broke it off. So there are other connections to these zone controls and uh, there's uh, one of the uh, one of the connections heads back to a terminal block in the heater. These other two connections, the two red ones, um, these are connected to a micro switch inside the zone control. And when the valve fully opens, these wires activate a signal to the to the heater control unit that says, "Hey, the valve is open. The pump can start." So this is the circulating pump. It pumps water down into the bottom of the boiler and then water comes out through and up through the zone control and up through the rest of the house. So with these covers off you can see the two, the two uh, smaller breakers and then the two larger breakers and then they have two nicely different colored sets of and gauges of wires that come over to this contactor panel right here. These are the two contactors and uh, if you take a um, yeah, it's running right now, so I was gonna I was gonna engage these manually for you uh, to show them cutting in. There's uh, right at the end of my finger there and there. There are plastic uh, plastic. They're not con they're not electrical contacts, but plastic no nibs that if you poke a uh, say a plastic screwdriver, a non-conductive screwdriver on those tabs, you can artificially trigger those contactors to cut in. The controls for those contactors are down here in this relay assembly. It's a, a, a fairly complex relay assembly. And uh, in addition to that, there's a transformer here as well. And then a control panel here as well. And uh, in the middle of the unit, there is this other um, terminal block. Uh, two leads go out to the thermostat, these two right here. And then these two are looped together. This would be for a... What was that for? for a flow switch, which we do not use here. It's just jumper together. And then these other two terminals were for an outdoor thermostat. 
so, which we also don't use, so those are jumpered together. So all of these terminals um, uh, have, a, have a specific function that relates to uh, to different features, and we only have the thermostat, the internal thermostat function here. This device right here is a time delay relay. So when the heater cuts in, uh, the large set of contacts um, activate first, and that triggers the high current um, element right away. But this device right here is a time delay relay, and after about 30 seconds, it will trigger this second set of contacts to, to cut in. And if we move over on this side, <coughs> uh, connected to the blue wires is a temperature control for the boiler itself. And it uh, has the control temperature where the boiler elements will cut in. And then when they get too hot, they will cut out. So there's the low control and then the high temp control. And also in here, let's leverage the opportunity to have a look at some of these elements. The top two are the uh, high current or high power elements. They had a resistance of six ohms, and then the bottom were um, were the lower wattage elements at 13 ohms. And since power is the square of current times resistance, um, when you drop your resistance in half, like the top elements, you will double the current, and therefore you get the square of that increase to uh, represent the, the increase in wattage. Now, there is a, a lot of corrosion on these elements, and um, that's apparently normal for a 40-year-old unit. I was a little bit concerned when I saw some water seeping in the bottom tray of this boiler earlier today. It was the first time we had it on for the season and uh, back two hours later and the water has all evaporated and the leak appears to have sealed itself. I talked to a reliable source today who seemed pretty unconcerned that, uh, that there was a leak. He said, oh well, just give it a few days. It, it'll probably seal itself up and uh, it didn't take nearly that long. One other comment while we're here is uh, when we started troubleshooting a couple of days ago, the water pressure in the unit was zero, and uh, obviously that uh, that was due to a leak, and we now know the source of that leak. It's the actual boiler itself. So over the last five or six months without use, it leaked out through that uh, very small hole. Um, but to add additional water, um, this line comes into the top of the, the boiler plumbing unit, and allows you to add water from the uh, municipal water system or your your cold water system in your uh, if you're well uh, well well fed, and so I'm not going to do it because we have the right amount of water in now. But to add water, you either raise this lower uh, lever or lower the lever. I can't remember, and I'm not going to try, but it's one of the two. So you would do that until your pressure gauge shows the uh, acceptable amount of pressure. And again, for this unit, it's 12 to 20 psi. Also, if you decide you want to drain some water out because your pressure is too high, uh, you put too much in, or uh, due to the temperature increase and expansion, um, there's, a, there's a drain valve. On this particular unit, it's uh, just above the circulating pump on the return from, uh, from the zone that we've been troubleshooting. And so we'd open up the valve and drain some water out. Finally, this is an expansion uh, tank that's uh, connected to this system and uh, this device is designed to have air in it. There's a rubber bladder in it and uh, the bottom part of this tank is supposed to be full of air, pressurized air. I think uh, 12 to 20 psi is on the on the uh, label. I'll just, I can't see it because it's around the corner but maybe you can see it. And um, that unit has air pressure in the bottom and as the temperature of the system heats up and the, and the water expands that increases the pressure in the system and water will drop down into this chamber um, and allow for the air to get compressed without building too much pressure in the zone. And uh, as the zone cools and the water contracts, the air pressure in here that was compressed now drives the water back up and into the zone. So it's a way of regulating the, uh, the water pressure in there without constantly having to add and bleed off water. And that's something that we may want to look into as well. Um, so uh, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to tell you on this unit. Um, 